Now, in the book, you write about inflammation and that inflammation is, is one of the key factors in heart disease, not saturated fat, but inflamed arteries as a result of diet. So what, what food is causing that inflammation and what's, you know, what's the mechanism by which it's uh, so damaging to us? So one of the big problems with nutritional research is that the plant-based uh, avoid animal saturated fat paradigm has been so popular for the last few decades that no meaningful research has been done on this, right? But what we know without a doubt when we look at the paleoanthropological evidence is that human beings have been super carnivores, which means 70% of their food came from fatty ruminant animals for over 2 million years. This is not up for debate when you talk to a paleoanthropologist. They know this. This is this is commonly cited in the literature. And so we've had this fad over the last few decades to demonize animal fat, saturated fat, and to uh, hold vegetable seed oils up on a, on a platform saying that this is the heart healthy way to eat. But the problem with the, the, the uh, vegetable oils is they're very high in omega-6 fatty acids and very low in omega-3 fatty acids. They are very often rancid, very often oxidized, and they do oxidize rapidly when you cook with them. And so you wind up with inflammation in the lining of your arteries, and that causes damage. And then your body tries to correct or repair that damage, and it uses cholesterol as kind of a spackle or a bonding agent to, to repair that damage so that when we go in and do an autopsy and we look at these arteries in the heart or elsewhere, we see this cholesterol buildup and we think, oh my God, there you go. That proves that cholesterol caused this, but that's not true at all. The, the cholesterol being present in the plaques is actually your body's attempt to try to correct the damage done by the inflammation and oxidation caused by the vegetable seed oils and the high carbohydrate diet that's recommended by everyone, including the NHS in their Eat, Eat Well guidelines. I was looking at that today, uh, five a day, fruits and veg, but you know everybody's gonna eat five servings of fruits because they like those better than veg, right? Base every meal on starchy foods like pasta and like rice, like grains. This is terrible advice and indeed, Following this advice is what is causing the epidemics of obesity and type 2 diabetes in modern society. Now, I spoke to a leading NHS heart surgeon on this program last year, and I put his, uh, you, sorry, your hypothesis to him about the idea that inflammation is the key factor in heart disease and that saturated fat is not a, an exclusive cause for concern. Um, and he said, well, some people believe or did believe that the earth is flat. So he compared the likes of yourself, David Unwin and others, to flat earthers. Um, have you come to blow with uh, other doctors in, in, uh, in health services around the world? Have you had arguments with doctors? Well, very often we have Twitter slap fights. And I think the flat earth analogy is very apt in this situation. But I think as, as the years and the decades go on, we will find that it's the other side who was guilty of believing in a flat earth, not Dr. Unwin and I. But uh, time will tell. We'll see uh, how it turns out in the wash. Well, look, I've got a big audience on this show and they're keen to get your pearls of wisdom, Dr. Berry. Obviously, they should run out and buy a copy of Lies My Doctor Told Me. And they should look at your very entertaining and informative videos on YouTube. But just uh, getting to brass tacks, if I've got people watching this who'd like to lose weight or possibly send their type 2 diabetes into remission. Uh, what does a good day of eating look like in your view? Well, step one would be to ignore the NHS Eat Well guidelines. I would ignore those completely. I would start my day with bacon and eggs or steak and eggs. Uh, and I would start that meal as late in the day as possible so you extend your intermittent fast because you've already fasted eight hours during your sleep time, right? So extend that out to noon if you can, and then break your fast with steak and eggs or bacon and eggs or just eggs and eggs. And then when you have a second meal of the day, maybe six hours later, because you will not need a snack in two hours if you eat that much healthy fat and healthy protein, you will be full and satiated for many hours. And then you can have a second meal in the day, which can be a, a big portion of fatty meat, 
more eggs. You can have a little bit of, of low carbohydrate veg, leafy green veg, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, asparagus. Um, and then that's it. You're done. You're, you're full. You're happy. You're satiated. You've eaten a very nutrient dense diet over the course of the day. And you've eaten enough healthy fat and healthy protein that you'll be able to fast with no problems until you break your fast the next day around noon once again. And it's very simple. It's very inexpensive. It does not have to be expensive in any way. And what you'll start to notice within a very few days is that as your insulin level returns to normal, you'll start to urinate away anywhere from 5 to 15 pounds of unhealthy fluid that you've been storing on your body. Immediately, your blood pressure will start to come down, your blood sugar will start to come down, and you'll start to feel better. And as you can repeat this each day, you're going to notice that the scale starts to move in a very positive direction. Uh, we've had many people reach out from the UK who have lost multiple stone of weight, and, and they couldn't be happier with this very nutritious, very sustainable way of eating. Because ultimately, what the NHS uh, Eat Well guidelines for people with or without diabetes, what it amounts to is a lifetime of a semi-starvation diet. You have to starve yourself for the rest of your life to lose the weight and then to maintain that weight loss. Who has the willpower to starve themselves for the rest of their life? I do not, and I suspect you do not either. And obviously the average person can cannot sustain that for more than a few months and then they gain all the weight back when they splurge. Why not instead eat a proper human diet that human beings have been eating for over 2 million years full of fatty meat and eggs a little bit of veg, a few nuts, and a few berries for dessert. It's called a proper human diet, and I think that it will work better than the NHS Eat Well Diet if you give it a 90-day try.